Thank you to Dr. Bronwyn Everill in the Center for African Studies at Cambridge for inviting me to contribute to your seminar on family history. This invitation gave me a welcome opportunity to step back and reflect on how family history has informed my own work. Family history has been an inspiration for my curiosity. It is also an approach to historical understanding that I champion for its accessibility and it has been a source base for my current project. My current project is a history of migration, urban culture, and the remaking of the Yoruba in the 19th century port city of Lagos, West Africa. In the 19th century, Lagos received migrants from various parts of Yoruba land and from the broader region of West Africa, as well as from Latin America, North America, and the Caribbean. In my current project, I'm exploring the implications of what the convergence of these groups meant for the making of urban culture in the city of Lagos. Like many people, family history gave the spark to my initial curiosity about history. It probably also informed my disposition towards the social history approach which is one that attends to mass experience and the lives of ordinary people. It all began when I was about 10 years old and my father took a trip to Brazil. And he came back talking about how the people he met in the northern part of the country were quote unquote like us. They ate the same foods and they spoke our language. And in the course of explaining to me how that could be, my parents presented the first inkling I had of the Atlantic slave trade and its role in the making of the African diaspora. These revelations were coupled with a story about how certain people who were taken to the Americas as captives ultimately came back to Africa and that my father's family were descended from such people. This was a deeply affecting moment of wonder, excitement, bittersweetness. I was taught about a connection or kinship with these faraway people, but it was one forged by the history of African slavery. I was not given much more than that, but the conversation stayed with me. And in my self-narration, this moment seeded a curiosity about diasporas in my mind that I would come back to many years later. How could I find records on ordinary people, like my father's grandparents, who lived these extraordinary life experiences of transatlantic migration back to Africa in a dangerously anti-Black 19th century slaving world? I was convinced that the sources were out there and that the richest sources on 19th century histories of migration were kept within families. I figured that if I could find a way to reach a large number of people who had these histories, I could get the scale of data that would enable me to make some general inferences to draw out a social history in effect. And this is where the idea for my research blog, The Ecopolitan Project, came from. In traditional um, academic historical research, we start with documents that we find in libraries and archives, and then we go to other records like oral records, material culture, etc. This is even the case in African history, a field that has devoted a lot of focus on thinking creatively about oral records and oral history methods. I became interested in family history as an approach because it is widely accessible and the method essentially begins with the oral, the familial, the local. Investigators start with the stories that they know and then move to the library or the archive later, um, if at all, if those are available and accessible where they are, which they aren't always. So what I'm doing is less uh, genealogical and more archival, but not in the sense of collecting and keeping archives, but more in the sense of trying to uncover where the archives are located. Family histories have many functions that they can serve in the lives or the minds of those whom they are directly related to. Social media comes into play as an avenue or vehicle for 
mutual sharing of family history records. For me as an academic researcher, I come across these records in libraries and archives all the time, records that are related to people's family histories. And I realize that I can share these with family historians who want to know more about their past. For my part, as I am also interested to learn their family histories, what stories people know about their ancestors, how these stories came to them, and how their family histories of migration in particular inform their individual self-understanding within a broader national and transnational communities.